All right, guys, so now what you're going to do is set up our database, okay? And as I said earlier, I'm going to use MongoDB as my database, okay? If this is your first time doing backend, um, let me tell you that a database is somewhere where you store your data, all right? For example, all your records, all your um, information about your application, uh, all the posts that have you, you have sent, you know, everything stores in the data, all right? So that next time when you visit that website, the data will still be there, okay? Because if you don't have a database, then the data will vanish, okay? So as I said earlier, I'm gonna be using MongoDB database. Now, I'm gonna be using something called MongoDB Atlas, all right? Now, what MongoDB Atlas is, is that it is a cloud-based database, all right? So you don't have to store MongoDB locally. If you're familiar with storing MongoDB locally, you can go ahead with that and do the project. But here I'm gonna use MongoDB Atlas. So first thing what you're gonna do is, you need to sign up here, all right, in order to use MongoDB Atlas. So let's go here. Now I already have created an account, so I'm just gonna add my details. And if you're using it for the first time, create your account. All right, so once you have created your account, you're gonna come to here where it's written clusters, okay? Because the first thing you need to create here inside this MongoDB Atlas is a cluster. So you will end up here, and here we're gonna click build a cluster. So let's click that. Now, you have some clusters, and in order to use those, you need to actually pay, but we're gonna use the free one, okay? Now it's going to let you choose a cloud provider because since we are storing the database on the cloud, we need to choose our cloud provider. For now, it's not that important. So we're just gonna use Amazon Web Services or the AWS that is right here. Okay. And also choose your region. And here in our cluster tire, you can see that it's giving us 512 MB storage, which is more than enough for our application right now. So go, let's just go here and create a cluster. All right, so while our cluster is being built, what we're gonna do is go to our security section right here, okay? And we're gonna click this database access. Now here you need to create a new user because in order to connect your database with your application, okay? So what we're gonna do is click this button right here that says add new database user. And we're gonna let the authentication method be password. And for the new user, I'll just add script nation. You can add your username or your own name, okay? And for the password, I'm just gonna add one, two, three, four, five. And let's click on to the add user. So now a user has been added to database access, all right? The next thing that we're gonna do is go to this network access because we will also require to do something here in order to access the database from our application, okay? So what we're gonna do is click here that says add IP address. Now it says right here that Atlas only allows client connections to a cluster from entries in the project's IP access list, all right? So whatever IP access so whatever IP addresses are here inside the list, only those IP addresses will be able to access the database, all right? So what you're gonna do is click here that says allow access from anywhere, and we're gonna set to confirm. Also, we're also gonna create another IP address, and in the second one, we're gonna click add current IP address, okay? and we're gonna hit the confirm button. All right, so the cluster is now made and we have created our user for database access and we have also configured the network access, all right? So now if you look at your cluster, now there are a lot of things going on right here, but you don't need to be intimidated by all this. The two important things that we need are this connect and collections, all right? And as the name already suggests, this collections will show you all the data that is there in your database. But for now, we don't require this because we have not added any data. 
what we're going to do is go to connect here all right so if you click here you'll have several options to of how to connect your application with the database and what we're going to do is use the second method with it which is connect your application so if you click here it will kind of give you this string all right so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this string and that is all you require from here okay but you do need to configure the database and the network access all right and you, you just need to go to connect and copy the string so what I'm gonna do now is come back to my project and let me see um, right here I'm gonna comment and say database URL all right and I'm gonna create a variable let's say const and gonna set that to URL equals and inside this single code I'm gonna paste the URL all right now instead of this password we're actually gonna write the password that we had made while creating the user for database access all right so well the my password was one two three four five you know just add whatever password that you had set while creating the user and here in the place of database name you can actually write anything I'm just gonna write diary and that is all the change that we need to do right here. All right, so the database is now set up in our MongoDB Atlas and we have the application right here. So now what we need to do is kind of connect our application with our database, all right? Right now we just have the access to this URL, but we, we haven't actually kind of connected our application with the database. So in Express, the way you connect your application with the database is with the help of a dependency called mongoose all right so what mongoose does is helps you connect your application with the database and it also helps you to interact with the database all right like creating or deleting data so what i'm going to do here is i still have my node mon running but i'm going to create a new terminal and here i'm going to say npm install mongoose all right and i'm going to press enter all right so the mongoose is installed so what i'm going to do here is call mongoose so const mongoose equals to require and here i'm going to say mongoose all right save that now in order to connect again in order to connect your application with the database you need to use mongoose.connect method all right so let me come right here and here i'm going to say connecting application with database and i'm going to say mongoose.connect connect all right and this method is what will connect your application with your database so here it will actually require two things all right the first one is this url itself which is actually stay saved in this url variable so i'm just going to write url and the second thing it requires is an object and inside this object we're going to set up a few things the first thing is use new url parser all right and i'm going to set that to true and the second thing we'll require is use unified topology and i'm also going to set that to true all right now these two parameters you'll always require this while you're connecting with mongoose all right if you don't add this parameter you'll kind of get an error later on so basically this is how you connect your application with your database with the help of mongoose.connect method and it requires two things the first one is the url itself 
which is basically the URL that we got from our MongoDB Atlas. And the second thing it requires is this parameters. Now, once the mongoose is connected, it will actually send a promise. All right. So we can get that with the help of then. And inside that, we're going to just say console.log mongodb connected. All right. I hope you guys are fami familiar with promises and this then. All right. So basically what this code means is that once this method is successful, all right, once your application is connected to, connected to the database, then this code right here is going to work. All right. And along the way, if it catches any error, you can actually get that with the help of dot catch method. All right. And here I'm going to say error console dot log error. All right. All, all I'm doing is just console logging the error that we're going to get if any error occurs. So let's save that. And now let's let's kind of try it out. So, so if I go to my first terminal, because node morning is already running here. All right. So I'm already getting node MongoDB connected server is running. All right. That means our application is now connected to our MongoDB Atlas. And this is how you connect your application with your database with the help of mongoose. All right. So whether it whether you're connecting your application with your local database or the database in the cloud, it's it's the same thing. All right. All you need is this URL and this URL parameters. And if any error occurs along the way, you can actually throw that error in your console. 